Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rust Foundation's quarterly AMA. My name is Sage Griffin. My pronouns are they, them. And today I am joined by two of our project directors, Jane Lusby and Ryan Levick, as well as the CEO and executive director of the foundation, Rebecca Rumble. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hello. Sage. <laughs> So first, a little bit of housekeeping. This is being recorded and the recording will be posted on the foundation website at some point after the AMA is over. If we have any questions that we don't get to, we may follow up uh, in a blog post sometime after the fact. So without further ado, I've got some questions pre-prepared. Feel free to hit that Q&A button and ask questions if you have them and I will get to them as they come in. But until then, I wanna start by having you clarify for folks who aren't familiar, what is a project director? How are you, how, how does that role differ from the other directors? Uh, yeah, Jane, would you like to go first? Uh, sure. So the project directors are like the other directors there. We're all sit, uh, we also on the board of the dire of directors for the foundation, but um, we specifically represent the, the project members instead of one of the companies that is a member of the foundation. And so there are five of us and there's there's kind of like two types of project directors. There's the area directors and the core team directors. And so the area directors, uh, which which I am one of them, have each like a kind of a focus that they try and fo like give extra attention to. So my focus is collaboration. We also have reliability and quality. Uh, and then Ryan and Mark are the core team directors who represent kind of the leadership perspective within the project. Cool. And Ryan, do, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, I think that was a really great explanation from Jane. I guess the only thing I would add on top of it is uh, we, this kind of goes without saying, hopefully, but we, we take our perspectives as project directors pretty seriously and that um, we want to do our absolute best to represent the interests of the project as a whole um, and not just kind of our own individual interests or other interests that might be aligned with us. Um, and so when when we're in board meetings or when we're talking with uh, other directors or members of the project, um, we really try to think not about, you know, what does Jane think about the specific thing? What does Ryan think about the specific thing? But what does the project as a whole need? Um, what are, you know, what are the different constituents in the project and, and how can we best serve that project? It must be a lot of pressure because like you both are in leadership positions within the project itself. And so people already take everything you say with some sort of authority, but like to be in a role where you actually are speaking for the entire project. Uh... <laughs> so uh, you actually raise an interesting point, uh, Ryan, because both of you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, both work for companies that are also foundation members and also have board seats uh, allocated to, the, to that company's interests. Do you ever have to deal with, say, conflicts between what is in the project's best, best interest and your employer's best interest? How do you sort of manage that balance of which hat you're wearing? It's it's come up a couple of times. It's usually just being really explicit. Like we, we have a disclosure form anyway. So it's like all very clearly documented what these relationships are. And I make sure to never bring up anything related to my employer in board meetings because I don't have that seat as a from my 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 employer like that, that's not who I'm representing in board meetings so I never bring anything up like that in board meetings but sometimes like when I'll, I'll email staff members and be like by the way this is me as someone who works at this company who's a silver member bringing up this other issue and just like be really clear about when I'm speaking with with project director authority and when I'm not yeah to, to add on top of that I think um I think we've had the pretty good fortune so far that um most of the time there hasn't really been any sort of need for any conflict. Um, uh, the board has tended to um, not always agree 100%, but be very open and honest with discussion and be able to find kind of um, good ways forward. And everybody operates in, in, you know, in good faith and is open about why they're saying things. If they're coming from a particular company, they may say, um, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I have this uh, point of view and here's why this is important to my company. And so as, as long as everybody's transparent, it makes it a lot easier. Um, in addition to that, um, so I, I work for Microsoft and um, our uh, board representative is Nell Shemrell Harrington. And Nell and I uh, talk quite often um, about any potential conflict and are kind of open and honest about what that means. Um, and um, I even sometimes kind of in a way like role play, like if I 
were if I were the Microsoft representative on the board, what would I have answered differently? And sometimes the answer is yes, I would have maybe changed my answer slightly um, uh, because you know I have uh, to represent different parties. Um, uh, so um, and as long as we're kind of talking through those uh, different scenarios and uh, and things, it's never really led to any conflict as far as I'm aware. Cool. And so what, what made you to want to be project director? What did the process for becoming one look like? Jane, how about you go first? Uh, so the core team reached out to me and asked if I would be interested. And I thought like, I because because of my involvement with Awesome Rust Mentors and within the project, I was like really excited about the idea of doing more work on collaboration within the project. And so I would say like really the motivation was just my love of the project and more specifically the people who work on it. And just wanting to make sure that like I can do all I can to support those people and make the project an even better place to work in. Yeah, for for me it was um, well we had a, a, a different project director, um, Florian Gilcher, who was was on the board. Um, and when Florian stepped down, we had to to select a new one, and I volunteered for the role and was selected for it. Um, the reason that I felt kind of open uh, about um, uh, or my desire to, to be on the board is, is frankly, because I find a lot of the stuff that the board, I mean, the foundation that uh, is working on very interesting. Um, the relationship between the foundation and the project is a very unique one, I think, in the open source world. Um, it's not really a technical role at all. We're not uh, involved in any of the technical decisions of the, or at least in this capacity on uh, uh, as part of the foundation board, we're not involved in any technical decision making. So it's really more about um, the people side of open source, uh, which frankly is the harder side of open source a lot of times, um, because people are hard, um, computers are easy. <laughs> uh, so uh, I just thought it would be very interesting to kind of work through some of those, uh, those issues, talk with it. Um, and I was frankly surprised that a lot of people, um, maybe not surprised, but a lot of people tend to shy away from these types of roles, probably because a lot of us come to open source for fun or um, you know to to let off some steam. And a lot of this work is not the most relaxing. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I, I still thought it would be worth it, and I'm 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 glad that I decided to to volunteer. It's been it's been fun. So I'm actually, I'm interested in hearing more about the process for selecting uh, the project directors, because as you mentioned, this isn't really a technical role. And yet most of the people who end up in leadership within the project tend to be there because of technical skills. So Jane, you mentioned the core team reached out to you. Is the core team selection the actual official process? Is there some other process? And how do you go about selecting the best people within the project for this role? Yes, absolutely. This is actually some, something like an evolving uh, process. So. I would say that when the foundation was started, uh, it was difficult to define the membership of the project to say like who should be involved in this decision. And so in order to, to make it so that they can move forward initially, rather than trying to resolve all this kind of organizational debt and figure out exactly like what, what, what level of membership is entitled to voting on project directors and what isn't, uh, they, they defined the project membership in the bylaws as the core team. And so the core team reached out to people and then together like went through those reviews and selected from that pool who would be chosen with the explicit, explicit intent that this would only be the process for the first round of project directors. And then over time, we would like be able to do that organizational work, have our governance be more clear, have our membership be more clear, be able to have elections or whatever selection process we think is most appropriate and have it basically be the project selects the project directors. Ryan, do you have anything you wanted to add? Um, so I guess that's the, the definitely a good um, description of, of the official process to add a little bit to like, what are the, um, what are some of the kind of qualities that we look for in somebody that's in this role, um, I uh, say your point about um, that technical leadership tends to be the one that are kind of mo most often available for this type of role is an interesting thing in open source in general, like the people that kind of um, 
come to the center of a project tend to be the ones that that are the most technically sound, um, which makes a lot of intuitive sense. Um, the challenge is that um, technical skills um, and building a great programming language um, and being on a foundation board are not always you know, aligned. Um, it's not always the people that are the best at making technical decisions will be the ones who are best at, at being on the board. Sometimes they are, um, uh, but sometimes they're not. Um, and so it is, I think, a unique challenge to be able to find people who can um, uh, you know, have great people skills, can, can talk through uh, complex problems with people, find compromise, um, keep a cool head when things get heated, um, be able to work through controversial topics without kind of taking a side and not, not trying to, to um, see the nuance uh, in it. Um, and so I think in, in part, it's also uh, trying to find the folks in the project who do have those skills um, and have the interest uh, finding them and then convincing them that it's worth it um, is also a, another challenge. Um, so, you know, that's the process that we, that we've gone through so far. Do y'all have any sort of limits on how long you serve for? Is this, uh, are these decisions that have to get made every year, or every two years? I saw Jane every, raise. Every two years. And are, are there limits on how long you can serve? Like, can the project just decide you are still the best person to be in this role and give you another two years? I don't recall if there's a term limit. I can jump in. Um, yes, you are able to be reelected. Um, Ideally, obviously, it's a bit difficult when you, you start an organization and the entire board is new. Um, what we wouldn't want is, you know, for everyone's term to end exactly the same time and have a whole co new cohort because you want to keep some of that institutional knowledge there. You want, you want, you know, current project directors to be able to kind of mentor new project directors onto the board. Um, so, yeah, there, there'll be a little bit of a staggering there. Um, to it to ensure that that we've got you know a good transition uh but yeah two two years and yeah re-election is obviously absolutely fine because yeah if, if the project still think that these are the right people to to represent them then that's great cool well moving on um what are the most important accomplishments you would like to see the foundation achieve in the next two years brian let's go to you first oh that's a big one um Let's see. Uh, well, I, th I think the original kind of core goal of the foundation is to be able to support the project as well as the, the wider community kind of be the best that it can be um, and make sure that people inside of the project feel, um, feel like they can contribute in, in a way that's not kind of putting undue stress on their lives or anything like that. Um, being in open source is tough uh, sometimes um, and I, at the end of the day, one of the central roles of the foundation is to make sure that people don't feel, um, you know, the blunt of the bad side of, of open source uh, too much. Um, and I kind of would love to see the foundation continue down the path of, of making that uh, a true reality. There's been a lot of great stuff that has started uh, with that, um, uh, you know, with the grant program that we that we've uh, created. So it's definitely started uh, going down that road. Um, and I just want to see more. I want to see uh, Rust, the Rust project achieve sort of the same no notoriety that the Rust language and wider community has, uh, has gained for being a you know, welcoming language, a welcoming community. Um, I think the project does have a reputation for being relatively open and welcoming, uh, thankfully, but we could do so much better. Um, it should just be an absolute joy to, to contribute to this, uh, to this language and to this community. And you know, sometimes due to the complexity, it's very big. There's a lot of people. The processes aren't are always clear. There's a little bit of, you know, favoritism towards in people that are already there, just through the sheer fact that it's hard to kind of orient yourself within uh, within the project. Um, and I would really, really love to see that kind of chisel away um, and get to the point where people can show up and just have a good time and contribute uh, to the best of their ability. Jane, how about you? I just, I think it's really just de the developing the relationship between the project and the foundation, which I think is the tool to get what, what Ryan was talking about, like having uh, like the grant program and having more people like go through this program and having these fellows develop over time within the project. Um, 
having the various support mechanisms like for things like making it more accessible globally as a project, expanding the project's reach um, and things like that and having it so we can like just go, being able to go to the foundation consistently and be like, here's a problem, let's solve it. And being able to have those additional resources, I think is, I, I, it's not really like any specific big thing. It's just kind of like, just kind of keep keep going, keep keep developing, keep growing. Cool. So how how would you say that the people who are listening in, what can they do to support you, or what can member uh, other members of the project who aren't in this director role do to support the, the project directors? Jane, let's go to you first. I'm having trouble thinking of good ideas. So if you can let Ryan, Ryan let's go to you back. first. <laughs> um, well, let me let me flip that around real quick before I actually answer your question and just say that um, you know at the end of the day we're here to serve you um, on the project. So uh, it's not really about how you can help us, but rather how can we help you. Um, so. With that in mind, I think my, my answer to the question is, um, please reach out, talk to us, um, tell us how things are going. Um, if, you're having, if you're having issues, even if you feel like they're not even necessarily related to the foundation, we'd love to kind of hear about your experience in the project because maybe there's something that can be done um, through foundation means in order to address that at some point. Um, so we, I know Jane and I talked to a lot of people uh, in, in the project, but naturally, of course, we have, you know, the people that we've worked with before and um, people that we've met in real life, maybe, or something like that. Um, we don't know everybody in the project as well as we could potentially. So we'd love to hear from more voices um, about what we can be doing to, to better serve. Yeah. So this, this, that primed me for what answer I want to give which is more or less the same thing, which is like, we talked earlier about like how it's important to represent the views of the project and our own personal views when we're in board meetings. Um, and I would say that's like, the, it's one of the harder things. There's like hundreds of people in the project and try and talk to as many people as we can, we can't talk to everyone. So just like keeping, it's like being, helping us stay informed is probably the most important thing because that's like, what we need in order to do our job is we need that information so that we can represent your needs. Unless it's related to the error trait in which you've got that covered, right? Yeah, I'm already, I'm already <laughs> searching, cold searching Twitter all the time, looking for error stuff. <laughs> so we've gotten a, a, a couple of different questions on a similar theme that I'm gonna sort of bunch all into one. Um, so we've talked a, a little bit about the challenges in finding the non-technical folks within the project. Do you think the project is doing enough to elevate folks who maybe uh, are there for non-technical reasons into appropriate roles? And, and uh, what do you think people can do to get kind of get involved in the project in that way? Ryan, let's go to you first. Uh, maybe my answer might come on too strong, so forgive me, but I would say absolutely not. We're not doing nearly enough uh, to, to support people who want to contribute and uh, you know, in quote unquote, non-technical ways. Um, just as an aside, like uh, still searching for a good term to, to do here when we talk about quote unquote, non-technical things, because we're, you know, at the end of the day, we're creating a programming language, right? Everybody involved here probably has some sort of rel relatively deep technical expertise. Um, and so we don't want to discount that. Um, and just because you want to contribute in quote unquote non-technical ways doesn't mean that you can't also contribute in technical ways. Um, but I digress. I think we definitely could be doing more to support folks who want to, to contribute, um, whether that's through um, project management, um, you know, taking notes is super useful, but you know, we sure as heck don't make it easy for people to just jump in and do that. Um, Technical writing, uh, documentation is a is a great example. Um, you know, shout out to Doc Jones, uh, who I know is doing a lot of work um, in in that area. Um, so you know, there's there's little bubbles uh, of it out there, um, but uh, and I'm I'm not exactly sure, you know, concrete steps yet of exactly what we need to do to make it better. Um, but I think we absolutely should do that and. Frankly, that's one of the things that I'm most excited about from the foundation side is I think the foundation is a really, really great 
tool that we could be using to facilitate some of this. Um, so, uh, you know, through many different means um, that we can get into if we want to. Um, but uh, hopefully in a couple of years from now, we'll, we'll look at the project and see, and see that, you know, if people want to contribute partially or wholly in these quote unquote non-technical ways, then they know exactly where to go and they have a really great time doing it. Jane, did you want to add anything onto that? Uh, yeah, so mirroring or I said, like, agree, we absolutely can do a lot better than we're currently doing. Um, I think this ties a little bit back into some of the, the governance work that we've been working on. Uh, there's like a blog post coming out soon, hopefully. Um, but the we've been looking a lot at like the structure of the governance. One of the things that was brought up in the requirements talk was like having an explicit structure. And I think like a lot of the work we're doing in for the governance within the project will go a long way in towards like making it easier to get in because it makes it more clear what the, the roles are, responsibilities, what work needs to be done and where you can go in order to get into that work. And so hopefully by making the project structure a lot more visible and obvious, it'll be a lot easier for people to navigate it and kind of get involved and find the technical work. And I would call it the non-tech work. I would call that like maybe operational work or policy work. Um, there's probably other types of work that don't fit into those. Um, but I think like kind of just being more explicit is the key to helping people find and do that work. Yeah, and hope, hopefully folks uh, understand that we're not trying to make the term be non or make it be disparaging. It's just they're hard to find the right terminology for it. Yeah. Um, it's also not as fun to refer to things like based on negations of other things, I think. That is, that's a good point, actually, yeah. So project directors sort of sit as, a, uh, as the separate role from the, the corporate directors, right? Have y'all ever found yourselves at odds with the corporate directors? And if so, what did coming to consensus look like if that happened at all? You both appear to be thinking for an answer, so I'll let either of you jump I'm, in as soon as you come up with one. It's I can't recall any particularly dramatic conflicts that we've had. Um, I, I don't know if we ever had like a vote, something go to a vote and then fail. So like, I think that generally we're it's a pretty congenial board. There, there's I I wouldn't be surprised if there have been ideas that have been brought up at various times that got shot down very quickly and never progressed beyond that. But those don't stick around in my memory, so I can't. I'm not able to come up with any like good examples off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm also struggling to to think of any really kind of spicy details, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, uh, cause I, I, yeah, there really hasn't been too much of that. Um, I guess on a, on a little spicy side, like there, there are every once in a while discussions that get started, you know, kind of like what Jane was saying, um, where it elicits an immediate reaction. This doesn't, you know, this is way earlier than any kind of vote, even an informal vote, which we sometimes have before having official votes, um, like, you know, straw polls or whatever, um, you know, where something comes up and, uh, and there's kind of two immediate reactions. Um, sometimes maybe from, you know, one side is the corporate side and one side is the project uh, side. It's not always down those, those party lines, um, but sometimes it does happen. Um, and, uh, you know, I think people, when, when they're in a certain frame of mind might be quick to go to, oh, the obvious answer to this question is this. Um, and then, you know, the reason that we have two types of directors and multiple perspectives on the board is for people on the other side of something to say, whoa, 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 have you thought about it this way? Um, and, you know, that might lead to an initial sort of clash is, is, is way too strong of a word, but it's kind of an initial like, okay, whoa, okay, I thought it was obvious, but apparently it's not obvious. And then everybody has to kind of rethink and go through their what they thought, you know, they knew, um, and reorient themselves within the question. And sometimes that's, you know, happens inside of board meetings. And sometimes that happens one on one, I've had a couple of kind of during board me meetings, somebody write me one on one and say, the last thing I said, I think maybe came off wrong. Like, I just want to clarify a few points and stuff like that. And it's like, oh yeah, okay. We're on, we're actually on the same page. We're just using different language to kind of express uh, the, you know, the same idea. Um, so it does get interesting. It's not like we're always like sitting there going, yep, 
we all agree 100 percent um but it's never gotten to the point where you know we're at each other's throats or anything like that so i guess you you won't be seeing a a, a tv show made about us or, or something like that anytime soon unfortunately <laughs> jane did you have anything else you want to add to that uh no i think that's okay that's good so both of you represent the project as a whole and the project's interests. Uh, but as anybody who followed uh, any of the RFCs, say around 2018 or so, might might be, remember, the project doesn't necessarily always have consensus within itself about, about things. Of course, that's hopefully only only direct, uh, focused on technical stuff, but there are certainly governance issues and, and things that the foundation might have a uh, role in as well at that. There might not be consensus within the project. So how do you go about balancing that and making sure that all of the different branches of, of in, within the project have a chance to make their voice heard. How do you represent this entity that is so nebulous and might not even know, not, might not even have consensus in, among itself about what's best? Jane, let's go to you first. Okay. Um, I would say this is like, like we talked about this before, this is like probably the hard, hardest part of the job. Uh, especially when there's conflict, which definitely does happen there. Like there are certain times when certain when some project members will come with opinions that like don't necessarily 100% agree with. And usually my response to that is to talk to them about that that perspective and be like, okay, like see where you're coming from. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out like this is why I feel maybe this approach that you're suggesting isn't the right approach. Here's what I think we should do instead. How do you feel about that? And kind of go back and forth with that project participant. Sometimes it'll also be kind of going back and talking with the rest of the project directors to kind of because that's a group that will we'll all respond pretty quickly. And we, so I can quickly gather feedback. It's a lot harder to get feedback from like the project as a whole or like all of the project leadership or something. So it's not always clear to us when when there's a concern that's brought to us, if this is a concern that's like one person has that's widely supported, or if it's something that one person has not widely supported. And so I would say that's actually currently like an open problem of like making that solution, that situation better for the project directors and making it easier for us to have like, here's a concern, let's bring it before project leadership and make sure that like we are correctly representing the project as a whole and not subsets thereof. For now, we just kind of play it by ear, do our best, try and make sure that everyone gets what they need and is happy in the end of the day. Ryan, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I think what Jane said was was spot on. Um, just to kind of like emphasize that uh, building consensus or or even kind of trying to understand where consensus might be found is really, really hard work um and also like extremely emotionally draining as well uh so um i definitely don't want people to to i'm, I'm not trying to elicit pity here or anything like that uh but uh i would say if there was if there was one aspect of the job uh that um is sometimes not so fun it's uh it's trying to have the patience to hear what can sometimes be the same argument over and over and over again and trying to have the same conversations over and over and over again and working through and doing the the you know the grind of trying to get people to think about things the same way um and if you've ever been in a conversation where uh you feel like your you feel like your argument is pretty sound and you're telling the person you know well what do you think about this argument and then they just like ignore you or what they feels like they just ignore you it's probably because they're not even in the right frame of mind to even kind of accept what you're saying or even kind of understand where you're coming from um and you know imagine trying to do that for potentially hundreds of people that's that's it's a, just a lot of work um and so kind of going back to a previous question of of what you can do to to, to help us i guess that's a it's another thing is um is when when engaging with us try try your very best to um work with us on figuring out what the different sides are because as soon as everybody knows this is the different perspectives and now we just got to make trade-offs between them that the quicker you can get to consensus um it's very hard to come to consensus when you don't even understand what other people are even saying 
So I'm actually kind of curious because you're all project directors, but you do have specific titles, right? You rep Ryan, you represent the core team. Jane, you represent uh, collaboration. Uh, we also got quality, reliability. Do you, do you feel that the project directors are generally more or less aligned on things or, or does the, the, the subtle differences in what aspect of the project you're supposed to be representing ever really come into play? I don't think we've ever had the different areas have conflict. Um, I think we've definitely had the different areas guide people's involvement and like what initiatives, like I have definitely gravitated a lot towards like the grant program and the government. Like the reason I'm doing the governance work within the project right now is kind of in my role as the project director of collaboration, at least in my mind. Um, but like beyond, beyond that, I would say no, it doesn't, they don't really conflict as far as I've ever seen. Ryan, did you have anything to add? Not really. Like uh, the. Oh, go ahead, Jane. I have, yeah. So one thing I did want to add, and this is so I, you'll have to double check with Josh and Tyler, but so I, but like I think I have heard them say in the past that they're not as confident about the, like they don't they don't feel as confident with the the areas and like how, what it what it does for guiding them. And so it might be useful as a project someday to revisit all the three areas that we split out and see like, are these helping and kind of like talk to the project directors who have been in those positions, get their experience and kind of see if it's something we should refine over time as well. Cool. So let's talk a little bit more about what your role actually is. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about attending board meetings and being the voice of the project and, and, and voting in the board meetings. Is that the entirety of your role or what else, what else is involved? I would say the other really big piece is facilitating discussion kind of both ways between like helping staff members find project members to reach out to like for relevant for whatever initiatives they're working on and having project issue, project members who have issues like either sometimes like if they don't feel comfortable reaching out to people directly I can be like I can take this over to them for you or I can just kind of give them the the relevant person to talk to like if it's the cloud compute initiatives I'll only go talk to Joel or something like that. Ryan do you have anything to add? Yeah, yeah. Along with that as well, there's um, this is not strictly per se necessary that we do this in our in our roles as project directors, but there are um, oftentimes initiatives and things like that that the foundation will take on. Um, one that comes to mind uh, is on trademark policy that we've uh, been working on. Um, there's like a little working group that's uh, that's looking into that and um, you know there was a survey where we asked the the project and the wider community um, for their feelings on, on certain aspects and trying to kind of synthesize that um, and I'm involved um, in that uh, in that sort of in my capacity as project director um, even though there are people involved in that that are have you know otherwise nothing really to do with the foundation that are just project members um, and, uh, and so I could have participated in my role as just as a project member, but um, I, I feel like coming from a place where I am representing the project, but know that that ultimately has to translate to, you know, board discretion and, and I know the personalities on the board and, and kind of where conversations might go and, and things like that. I think that makes my participation different than it would have otherwise been if I was participating purely as a as a project member. Um, and so at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff ultimately does come back to the board meetings where that kind of um, we end up, you know, exercising actually any of the invested authority that we have. Um, but uh, but you know, during you know, in three or four weeks during the um, during the month when there isn't uh, that happening, um, we're sort of um, preparing for that through our engagements in these uh, in these different sub projects by talking with the staff in our um, in our fortnightly meetings that we have, um, uh, and you know, going through and talking with other project members and things like that uh, to get their perspectives. Um, so. Uh, so yeah, it, it does end up being a, a bit more work than just the, the once a month engagement. I didn't realize y'all were having your board meetings in the metaverse. 
<laughs> Can I just jump in there, Sage? And, yes, uh, go ahead, Beth. Yeah, just, I feel like Jane and Brian are uh, almost making it sound like, like less work than it is. Um, it's a lot, they do a lot of work. <laughs> um, I, um, <laughs> they have an awful, awful lot of docu like just some boring document to read and comment on and then it disappears and that document circles back around again and more comments um, and more reviewing. Um, this happens a lot that, you know, running an organization like the foundation, there's documentation all over the place, you know, these aren't people that just turn up to the board meeting, sit there, nod, you know, um, have a quick conversation then and then leave again, you know, there's a lot of documents to, to review beforehand. Um, you know, I, I don't know whether it was Jane or Ryan that said it earlier, but, you know, a lot of it's not really exciting stuff. You know, a lot of it's looking at budgets and financial projections. Um, and, you know, these are things that that are absolutely necessary for them to, to get their heads around um, as, as directors of the foundation. Um, and these aren't just things you can kind of glance at quickly um and and you've got it you know if you've never seen one of a budget or a financial projection before you actually have to sit down and learn how to do that so that because their job is to hold me and my staff to account um so yeah you know this is this is a lot more work than that than they're making out I just want I want to emphasize that you know I absolutely rely on on Jane Ryan um and the other project directors to to try and help steer us and, and advise us and when we make mistakes they help us figure out what went wrong um, and, and try and do better. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's a lot and there are messages going back and forth all of the time. So um, whilst I, I think it's a great role, um, I don't I don't want them to undersell how much they do. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I would imagine, you know, everything else aside, all the other work that you do, just having somebody whose job it is to represent you know, but for, uh, using the trademark as an example, once the working group comes to its decisions, having somebody who's already attending the board meetings, already familiar with the process and all the other folks, somebody, you know, who, who is who is the known go to uh, point for bringing that to the rest of the board, I would imagine is incredibly helpful. So uh, the foundation's stated mission is that it is a steward to the language and the ecosystem. Can you talk a little bit about what that means to you? Ryan, let's go to you first. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Um, so, stewarding is is sort of in my mind a um, kind of a position of, of of service, right? You're you're um, you're not leading. You're not you're not moving. You know, you're not making necessarily making the decisions or kind of um, steering the ship. You're you're rather clearing the path um, for others, and I think that that is kind of core to to what the foundation does. Um, we already talked a little bit about how the foundation is not involved in any technical um, decision making, right? That's squarely in the in the house of the pro of the project, um, and. Uh, what the foundation does do is uh, try to look out at the project and, and ask the question, what do you need? Um, and when the project then responds and says, we need this, the foundation um, can, can kind of synthesize those voices because sometimes, you know, what, what the project thinks it needs is not actually what it needs. It needs something slightly different that kind of can address um, multiple different needs. But it, uh, the foundation looks out, synthesizes the responses, and then tries its best to come up with um, with solutions that will ultimately help uh, the project. I think everybody here would agree that you know we're still young as a foundation, right? Um, and we've not always gotten it right. And frankly, it's a little unfair to expect um, the the foundation to get it right every time on the first time. Um, there needs to be a place for for learning and growth um, and things like that. Um, but um, at the end of the day, when the foundation is doing uh, its job, um, the project will feel like it has everything it's, it needs and the foundation will be sitting there on the sidelines cheering it um, along the way and, and, and yelling rah, rah, rah as, as, the, as the project does really wonderful things. Jane, how about you? What, what does being a steward of the language mean to you? 
I think Ryan said it very well. I would just, I guess, further emphasize like the importance of listening and how like the foundation really, I think, does a lot of work of finding out what like what these needs are and like figuring out how to, to meet those needs. Um, yeah, beyond that, I don't, I don't think I have much more to add beyond what Ryan did. Okay. Well, so Ryan, you mentioned that the foundation is still relatively young, but even in the short time that's been around, there's been a lot that that has been accomplished by the foundation. Can y'all share kind of what maybe your favorite outcome that has come out of, uh, out of the foundation? What what has that been, and why is it that we're no longer asking unpaid volunteers to be on call for Crates.io? Jane, let's go to you first. That's a good one. It's it's definitely that one because uh, that is inhumane to have a on call rotation, which is two volunteers rotating for twelve hours each every single day. Um, so I'm really glad we don't have that anymore. Um, and Jane I, knows I, firsthand what that what I went through when I was on call for multiple years. Yes, it is does not sound good for one's mental health. Let's not do that to people ever again. Um, the, I, I was also, I would have before you mentioned that because I just, you know, don't always remember everything we've done at all times. Um, I think the grant program is like particularly near and dear to my heart. And I'm really excited to see uh, where all the, the grant recipients kind of go over the next couple of years and how, how these grants impact their involvement in the project and the work, how it impacts the project, all the above. I, I think it's going to be really disproportionate to the size of like the the monetary contributions. I think it's gonna be really good. Very excited about it. Ryan, how about you? Uh, Jane's answer was really great. Um, so definitely plus one to that. Um, if I have to pick a different one, I think, I don't know, my, my answer is kind of lame. Uh, but I think it's really great that we can just do things like talk about trademark policy now. Um, we can like have a lawyer there and a you know a trademark uh, specialist talk us through things, um, and we're not relying on volunteers to have you know volunteer time for that or you know trademark specialists that are just you know sitting around waiting to help for out for free in some random open source project. We get to actually pay experts for their expertise, um, and uh, we get to tackle the problems that are maybe not the most glamorous or the things that, you know, if you're coming to contribute to Rust for the first time, you probably don't think about, um, but they're like very, very necessary um, to do um, because if you don't do them, uh, well, if you don't do them, most of the time, nothing happens and no one notices. Uh, but then that one time that something does happen, everybody notices and, you know, then the whole internet is ablaze with, with controversy. Um, so we actually, you know, for the, really kind of the first time in the history of the Rust project, get to try and be ahead of the curve and, and anticipate issues and try and um, work down some of our organizational and project um, debt that, you know, because we've been a largely, uh, a largely volunteer oriented organization for so long, we've just not We've not been able to do that, um, and when we've tried, like putting people on call, we've been we've had to do it in inhumane ways. Which, yes, absolutely, we we absolutely do not want to do that anymore. Yeah, I mean, people underestimate the value, especially when we have uh, parts of the project like Crates.io, which host user submitted content at, that is subject to copyright. Like having easy access to a lawyer and knowing where to go when when you need a lawyer to get involved. It's really easy to underestimate how valuable that is, but you really don't want to wait until you need a lawyer to know who to talk to to get the lawyer. So we've talked about the stuff that has happened. Are there anything? Uh, are there any funding related things that that the foundation hasn't been able to to fund yet that you'd like to see happen in the future? Jane, let's go. Let's go to you first. Uh, Ryan, let's go to you first. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure if you were actually answered. Um, <laughs> things that I would like to see funded that haven't been funded yet. Um, well, we sort of, we're on the path for this. So this is, this is not quite true in that we've already um, done a couple of, of hirings, but I'd like to see more people hired um, to work on Rust full time and to not, um, I think it's wonderful and great 
um, that people like myself included can be hired by companies to work on Rust. That's 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 awesome. Um, and my company, and I know a lot of other companies will pay me to explicitly work on Rust and not work on Rust for things that my company needs, but rather just make Rust better. That's that's well and all well and good and great. Um, but there's a lot of stuff uh, where making the argument that um, a company should uh, should fund somebody full time to work on something is is really hard, or sometimes even just not. You know, we don't we don't even want that, um, right? We want to kind of make a, a clean separation between between industry um, and you know what the project needs. Um, uh, you know, so we can just avoid all of those funny questions um, from either even having to be asked. Um, and so I would love to see even more hiring uh, of specific things. We have um, uh, people working in infrastructure uh, now for the project full time. That's really wonderful. I'd love to see people involved in um, tooling, project management, um, kind of um, the, the, the roles that will make a uh, contribution for those who are not working on it full time or working, uh, you know, maybe they're working on the weekends or, you know, in their free time or even they're working for a company on a specific thing, just making their lives easier. So there's so much we could be do, doing to, um, to just make the project healthier by, by being strategic about placing people in the right place um, and giving them the capacity to, um, to kind of, um, you know, double speed or, or uh, you know, give the project its, its, uh, its one up or its power up um, by, by doing the things that volunteers are frankly just not gonna do um, because, you know, why would you want to? Jane, I promise not to awkwardly cut you off this time. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, so I think I have like two things that come to mind. I'm not sure if any of them are specifically like, it's not because of a lack of funding. It's just like projects that we haven't had the time to work on or possibly haven't really talked about. So like, you know, disclaimer, this is like potentially even just my ideas and not necessarily stuff the foundation is committed to or anything like that. Um, but like, uh, we, I know we've had discussions about kind of like accessibility and like transcriptions, translations, and kind of like helping the, this is a bit about like ESL, like second language speakers making the project more accessible to them, as well as people with like auditory processing disorders or just anyone who benefits from having uh, transcripts and uh, things like that. I, yeah, I, I personally benefit from that. So that's obvious. There's a bit of bias, I would say in that one. Um, Another one that I'm interested in is I would like to see us do a lot more like active inclusion work. And because I think that like the, the demographics in computer science in general and software open source, not great. And so I know it's, it's a hard problem to solve. It's not something you can just like snap your fingers and all of a sudden everything is exactly the same as like average human populations globally or something like that. Um, but it, I think that we can do better and I would be excited to to put in a lot more kind of coordinated effort to find ways to make the make it possible for people who are like system like systemically prevented from participating in the project due to lack of resources or time um, to be able to help them get it. I think the grant program is a really good step in that direction but I think we'll probably need to go further if we want to like we, if we were to set goals I think that we wouldn't get to those goals with just the grant program. Yeah, I did really like to see that the grant program um, included paths for folks who aren't already super involved with the project to still apply for a grant because some people don't have the ability to get involved in open source if they're not being paid. Yeah, I also really like how the grant program is just globally consistent pay. And so it's like has a disproportionately positive impact on in areas where, where there's like less resources to be able to even get involved in the project in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. So there are uh, five project directors in total, and I think about a dozen uh, corporate directors. Do you feel like the the project has sufficient representation on the board? And are there any other perspectives, either within the project or outside of the project, that you don't think uh, get the representation they should have? Hmm. Jane, let's go uh, to so, you first. So I definitely think, so representation, percentage wise, like it doesn't really matter what the relative count is because that's not how the voting on the board works. The vote is like any vote is a supermajority of both groups. And so 
if the project directors were all against something, the corporate directors, no matter how many of them there are, they can't force this. Ha there has to be consent from both groups. Um, uh, what was, there was a second part of the question. I, I, I lost track of it. Are there any other perspectives that you think uh, aren't represented on the board? Yes. So I think like we do a good job of representing the project members and we go do a good job of representing the member companies and the member companies are in a large part like a lot of the community i would say like not just the companies themselves but also a lot of the employees of those companies that they're not necessarily being directly represented at that level but i think like the community itself is something that i it would be cool to get more representation on but it's hard because it's just such a nebulous thing um and I think the project directors and the, I think everyone's kind of representing those views as well. So maybe maybe it's fine, but that's the one thing that isn't directly represented where like, especially as the foundation grows and like looks at like stewarding the language is also supporting the ecosystem because there's a feedback loop there. You can't like one does not exist without the other. Um, I, I think that as that kind of side of the foundation grows, there's gonna be more need to make sure that we are listening to people who are affected by those decisions. And Ryan, how about you? Yeah, as far as uh, underrepresentation um, on the board, I definitely think there's a there's a myriad of different ways that um, we're kind of lacking representation. A lot of which is, you know, not to make excuses immediately before I even tell you what it is. A lot of it's really hard to 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 figure out. Um, but with that in mind, like uh, um, I'm pretty sure every single um, Obviously, the corporate directors are full-time employees of their companies, and every project director is also uh, employed um, by a company to work on on Rust um, and have kind of permission from their company, um, I believe, to um, to uh, you know in their role. Um, if that's not one hundred percent true, it's mostly true. I think. Uh, I feel like most like everyone except for me, I think, has like a slice of work and project where and I'm like the only I, I feel like I'm the only one who's like a hundred percent project time. Yeah. Yeah. Um so but but still like you know there's nobody on on the um you know on the project directors who is a volunteer. Um but you know at the same time that's also hard and maybe not even really a good thing because like this is a lot of work and like do we want to require somebody to volunteer their time to do all of this? I don't know. So like this is this is tough to do. Um, the, the board is also pretty predominantly um, American. Um, I say that as as an American, I do live in, in Europe, so I have a slightly different um, uh, perspective, but uh, there are a lot of US Americans uh, on the board that comes from the fact that the big tech is predominantly um, US American. It's not exclusive. Um, uh, but even the project directors, um, I think all of us are are US citizens and all uh, have English as our native languages. Um, that's true for almost all of the um, corporate members as well. Um, so that definitely biases uh, things as well. I would love to see a little bit more geographic um, uh, representation there, you know, but it is what it is. That's, that's also maybe a, an issue we have in the project as well, um, because we have to communicate and, you know, English for Lots of fun historical reasons we can not talk about here. On. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, has has a, a place in the world of tech, and so here we are. Um, so, so there's plenty of that, um, and you know, we can go on and on about different uh, perspectives that we're not maybe fully representing or representing the way that we should be. Um, so it's going to be a work in progress. Um, we can do better. Um, and I think, you know, I'd love to hear more perspectives on, on how we should accomplish that, um, because there's probably plenty of really bad ideas for, for how to, like, make it look better on paper um, and end up with a worse, um, kind of a worse experience uh, uh, inside of the foundation board, so. So, and ideally, you know, as project directors, you are getting all of the perspectives of the projects, but if you ever did miss somehow, or somebody felt like their voice wasn't being included in the, in what you're representing, how does a member of the project, what should they do if they disagree? Uh, like, let us know different immediately. I mean, it's like a lot of these, a lot of decisions, they're not like instantaneous or permanent. So if there's like some additional concern that comes up, like the sooner we know about it, the sooner we can try and get that 
that need integrated in anything that we're work that the that the foundation is working on. And since you are the only the only uh, project director who is one hundred percent of your time on the project, all complaints should of course be directed to you, Jane. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Ryan, uh, did, did you have anything you want to add? I, I would add that I'm also happy to always hear um, from anybody. Uh, so you can, you, you know, you can find me on Zulip, um, on Discord, uh, um, you know, email, whatever. Um, I'm sure we can figure out a way to, to get my contact information out there to people. Um, please, please reach out. Um, let me know, you know, it could be anything all the way from we just got to figure out better ways of communication um, because sometimes people are upset about things that are, you know, not even true, um, and we're just doing a poor job of communicating, um, which is, you know, in and of itself a very bad problem, but um, a different problem than needing to actually change, you know, a, a, a you know a specific thing that's happening. Um, so just reach out. Um, we'll talk through it. We'll, we'll get your perspective, and then I can guarantee you that it's going to be discussed a lot. Um, because, uh, if there's one thing that we do, uh, is, is try to try our very, very best, um, to talk through all the different perspectives we've heard, um, and figure out how we can best represent, um, everybody. We've got time for one more quick question. We've talked a lot about how hard a lot of what you do is and how much work it is. If you had to do it again, would you have still volunteered for this role? Jane, let's go to you first. Yeah. Yeah, I would have. I, uh... I think the, the same motivation that existed when I took this role in the beginning still exists. And so like, you know, when, when I was asked to do it, it was kind of in my mind, like a vote of confidence and trust. And I really value that and right, like kind of respect that. And um, if the project tells me that they, that they need me to do this and they, they want me to do this, then I will of course continue to help out as best I can. Cause this is where I work, it's where I, it's like practically where I live. Um, so I want it to be a good place too. Ryan, how about you? Yeah, I feel I feel very humbled by the fact that um, you know at least there are some people in this project that seem to trust me enough uh, with this role, and I'm I uh, I feel very honored uh, by that. Um, this has been one of the most difficult, but yet very very rewarding uh, jobs that I've had. Um, so I would absolutely, absolutely do it again. Um, you know, it's not always, it's not always fun. Um, but a lot of times that it, it is, and we get to work with great people. Um, and so I, I, you know, absolutely. I'd do it again. Cool. Well, with that, we are out of time. Beck, did you have anything you wanted to add in closing? No, just, uh, yeah, thank you to, to Jane and to Ryan for sharing their experiences. I know, like, it, you know, it, it's a very strange, huge role. Um, and I think it's great that, that people have gotten to hear exactly, you know, how much they do and, and how fascinating a role it is. Thank you for setting this up. Like, it's a great idea. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, that is all the time that we have. As I mentioned earlier, this, this session was recorded. Keep an eye out on the blog and uh, the foundation's Twitter to, to get the recording when it's available. If we didn't have time to get to your question, we may follow up with it on a blog post at some point in the future, but no promises. Yeah, with that, thank you very much to all of our panelists and thank you for attending. My pleasure. Thank you.